and you see people come in. Yeah. Uh, Let's see if someone emailed me and say, where's the address? Is that you? No. No, it's another person. Oh, good. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We're just going to wait for a few more people to join us and then we'll start in a couple of minutes. Good morning everybody. Hi, my name is Deepti and welcome to our first Facebook Live of the year. Um, this is a chalk paint live workshop that we are hosting in collaboration with Expat Living and Clooney Court at Big Blue Trunks. So welcome to our studio. You might see a part of our Zara mural behind us. Um, firstly, we'd like to apologize for the change in date. We're finally doing the workshop. I, have, I was unwell for a few months, but now I'm feeling good and back to work. Um, so we're, we're just going to do a little bit of an introduction and then we'll start. Um, my name is Deepti and I'm the owner of Big Blue Trunk. I started my chalk paint journey about seven years ago. Uh, I was staring at this old console table in my living room that didn't look very nice and I was wondering what to do with it. So I randomly googled furniture paint and I stumbled on chalk paint and that's where it all began. So for five years I have been an ardent loyal customer of the paint and then about two and a half years ago I took over the business and now I bring the joy of chalk paint to you all. Um, so let me tell you what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to talk to you about Annie Sloan chalk paint, um, the products, the tools that are used for furniture upcycling. And then I will actually demonstrate how to paint and how to... Then we're going to move on to some more techniques such as how to add metallic touches to furniture, how to distress, which has been a very, uh, which is a popular request by a lot of people. And then finally we'll move on to how to mix colors because all of the Annie Sloan chalk paint colors can be mixed. Through this whole process, Susan is here from Expat Living. She's behind the camera, so you can't see her. But if you have any questions, just please feel free to post and we will help answer them along the way. Great, so should we start? Yes. Okay. So a lot of you would know who Annie Sloan is, but anyway, let me tell you. Can you see that? See that? Yep. So that's Annie Sloan. She's an artist and an interior designer and she's based in Oxford in the UK. She invented the original chalk paint 30 years ago and um, her whole idea behind um, coming up with chalk paint was to bring the joy of upcycling to people around the world. She didn't want you to feel like you need to be a professional or have experience to be able to upcycle and make your home beautiful. So chalk paint is called chalk paint because it's made of limestone, which is chalk. So it's an all-natural, non-toxic paint. While we know it primarily to go onto furniture, it can actually go onto anything. It can go onto metal, plastic, fabric, leather, terracotta, um, hair, if you please. Um, so you can literally upcycle anything with Anisone chalk paint. Um, her, her, her idea behind it was she had three little kids, so you know, the idea was drop them off to school, come back, paint a piece of furniture, and it should be back in its place and ready to go before you have to go pick up the kids again in the afternoon. So it's easy to do. Um, it's very forgiving. Anybody can get good results with Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, any questions at this point about um, Annie Sloan or chalk paint, please type them in, and I'll go on and, and tell you a little bit about the tools. So chalk paint, like you can see here, it's quite a thick, 
paint um, like I said non-toxic it has no smell you can use it indoors very safely around children no problem um, if it's if it spills you can always wipe it up with a piece of cloth um, the thing about chalk paint is that it's a very thick paint and a heavy paint um, and so to get good results especially on furniture Annie Sloan developed her own line of brushes to help you apply the paint well and to get good results. So let me show you the types of brushes that we have. So these are Sorry, the, Diti, yeah. can you just ask if everyone can hear you? Can everyone hear me? Am I audible? I've increased the volume so that okay. people, people could hear you a little bit better, but okay. yeah because some just mentioned um, that the volume is slightly soft so I might move a little bit closer to you okay, okay someone is that better I'll try to yeah. speak a little louder as well okay. yeah perfect okay so I was talking about the brushes that are used to paint furniture or to upcycle furniture a lot of people say you know what why should I invest in brushes for those of you who use makeup it is a little bit like makeup you know with the right tools or if you're an artist you know the importance of brushes and getting a good finish and, and a good end result so these are the two types of paint brushes that Annie Sloan has I'll start with the classic oval natural bristle brush so it's made of natural bristles um, and it's a unique oval shape which you don't usually see the beauty about this brush is that it holds and spreads the thick paint really well. It's great for curved surfaces, so if you have a little curved stool or you have a carved mirror, you can jab into it with this, which you can't really do with a flat brush. The flat brush is made of synthetic bristles. So if you want a more smooth kind of a finish with less brush strokes, you would use the flat brush and you would also use it for any kind of flat surfaces. So if you're painting shelves or a tabletop, you could go with the flat brush. My favorite has always been the oval brush. I paint flat, curved, any kind of surface with the oval brush. Um, you do get a lot more brush strokes with this brush, uh, but that's the whole beauty of the paint, that in the end it looks hand painted. It's not a spray paint finish. If you want a spray paint finish, you could achieve that with Annie Sloan, but then you'd rather just spray paint something. Um, so that's a little bit about the brushes. Question, yes. how many brushes would you kind of need to paint a furniture, for example? Do you need at least minimum two or three or just one is okay? I would say you need two types of brushes. One is your paint brush. And if you're getting just one paint brush, this is the brush to go for. And the second brush you need, and I'm coming to that, is the wax brush. Um, so the thing about chalk paint is that you do need to seal it or give it a finish to protect your paint work and to give it a, a, you know, different kinds of looks. And to do that, we use wax. The wax is applied with the wax brush, which looks a little bit like a shaving brush. Um, so it's very dense bristles and peaked on the top. And you massage the wax into the paint once you're done painting. So today I will also demonstrate how to use the wax with the brush. Um, let me show you, oh yeah, okay, let me talk to you since I'm on the waxes. There are four types of waxes or four types of finishes that you can get with the wax. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, so up here is the black wax, which gives a more industrial warehouse finish to your piece. This one here, the second one, is the dark wax. That's for a more antique, aged, dirty, you know, that old kind of a look. Then you have the clear wax, which is just a clear matte finish. And finally, you have the white wax, which gives a light, bright, coastal feel to your piece. So it's not just about the paint. It's a lot about the wax and how you finish your piece that transforms how it looks. Um, so another question we often get is, can I skip the wax? No, you can't skip the wax. We definitely don't recommend that. Because if you want, I have pieces in my house that are seven years old waxed and they're still going strong if you want durability you want protection you should wax your piece and of course like i said you get different kinds of finishes with the wax as well so this is the same four waxes on a different color florence so you'll see the black wax the dark wax the clear wax and the white wax at the bottom so deep if you yes. wanted to have a dis distress look I yes. think that's probably the term that Correct. what people use yeah. what kind of wax would you choose for that type of look 
There are two ways to do a distressed finish. One is that you just distress or sand your piece and that's it. You don't want to use any other, you just use a clear wax finish. Right. The other way, if you really wanted to get that aged, dirty, old look, then you would use the dark wax, which is a warm brown tone. Okay. Um, you could use it on the edges, uh, wherever you've distressed, corners, areas that would naturally sort of distress. Perfect. Yeah. Got it. Good. Let me move on to the last bit in my introduction, which is the colors. So Annie Sloan has 42 colors, um, sorry, 44 colors in her palette. And all of these colors, you can see up here, these are the whites and the greens, so all the neutrals. And then you have the color wheel here. Um, they can all be mixed. So if you're going to look for a very specific shape that you don't see here, you can actually mix it. And I'll show you today how easy it is to mix Annie Sloan colors. So that's the color chart. Each color comes with a little bit of a history and story behind it. We have a new color coming soon called the Capri Pink, um, created especially for this year to bring joy and brightness into our lives. Um, that's coming in 10 days. Okay, so the first part of our demo today is going to be how to paint and how to wax. Very basic, but a lot of questions around this, especially when people are first timers using the paint. And so I'm going to demo that. I have a stool here. This is an IKEA stool. So again, that's a popular piece people like to paint any IKEA furniture. Yes, the paint can go onto IKEA furniture. Step one, take a damp wet, wet cloth and wipe. Clean the surface that you're painting. No dust, no oil, no grease. Give it a few minutes to dry. Do you wet the cloth? Yes, it's a damp cloth. Okay, damp cloth, yeah. right, yes. Take your paint out in a bowl. So never put your brush into the can. Um, ideally, you would take it out in any kind of bowl. So I have taken out this gray here. It's called Chicago gray. And you can see it's been out for a while, so it's really thick. What I'm going to do now is add just a little bit of water to loosen the paint. There is no ratio to this because people ask us, what is the ratio? There is no ratio, you just add I would say go teaspoon by teaspoon, give it a mix and see until your paint is flowing well. So I'll show you what that means. I've been doing it all wrong. I've been just <laughs> dunking with the brush. Actually, there's, it, there's really, you can experiment. There's no right way with Annie Sloan. It's just a better way, you know, easier yeah, way. Definitely. This is definitely the easier way. <laughs> The because other reason we don't recommend putting your brush in the can or water into the can is because the paint has no chemicals in it. So if you add water, you keep dipping your brush, you could contaminate it. So to, to keep it longer, you'd ideally not want to put your brush in. So here you see, can you see that? Yeah. Now you see it's kind of flowing better, the paint. Yeah, very light, lighter, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first coat of paint. I've got a lot of paint in my brush. Don't be stingy with the paint. Apply it generously, any which direction, it doesn't matter. Of course, there are people who like to paint in one direction, which is also fine. But if you see the way, the way I paint, the way Annie paints, it's always different directions, whatever goes over the quickest and gives you the best coverage. So this color is Chicago Grey, it's a very light grey and you can see just with one coat I've already got great coverage. We ideally suggest to do two coats at least. Two coats? Two coats, yes. Okay. So you would do one coat and give it an hour to dry under the fan or the aircon or outside and then do a second coat. So that's my one coat, all done, can't see the wood anymore. Titi Luli is asking, Yes. do you need to sand the, um, the furniture first or no need? 95% cases you don't need to do any sanding, including laminates. Um, you can just directly clean and paint. There are a few cases where you do need to pre prepare a little more, which is give it a rough sanding or cleaning, especially if you have, say, rust on your piece. Or um, it's a super high gloss laminate, then you can just scuff up the surface a bit. But chalk paint adheres to almost any kind of surface really, really well. Okay. Great. So that is my first coat. 
you can see the brush strokes. I love that finish. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to do now is dry this. So we're going to use a hair dryer here in the studio just to speed it up. But at home, you would just leave it under the fan for about an hour and it will be um, dry. So while Leah is actually doing that, do we have any questions or should I? So one was asking again, yeah. Any? what was the name of the paint that you just used? Chicago Gray, yes, right? Yes, that's a Chicago Gray. And let's do, so if you get the color card from Annie Sloan, there's a little bit about mm -hmm. each color. So the Chicago Gray is a modern gray with a hint of blue. Suggestive of architecture in Chicago, so that's where the inspiration ah. comes from, and maybe a little bit about the Chicago weather as well, I guess. Uh, so every color has a little story behind it, uh, which is interesting to read. Um, so yes, let me um, maybe while that's being dried, I will talk to you about the wax. Yes. So here you see that is how the wax looks. It's like Vaseline or butter, really thick and gloopy. Um, the wax is made of two natural waxes. So you would have heard of beeswax, which is in a lot of our cosmetics, it's an edible wax. Um, the other wax is the uh, carnauba wax, which comes from Brazil, which is another ed edible wax. Now the thing with these two waxes is that they're very, very hard in their natural state. But when we need to apply them, let me show you. It's actually very soft, like butter. Mm. So there's a little bit of mineral spirits added into the wax. And the reason I'm telling you this is just so you understand how the wax works. Now the mineral spirits have a slight smell, a um, little bit like shoe polish, but not much. You apply the wax, and as soon as you apply it, the mineral spirits start to evaporate. And as they evaporate, the wax is hardened back to the original state. So this process is called the chlorine process. And it takes a week to 10 days, at the end of which you have a fully protected, all natural piece of furniture. You can paint tools, toys, a food platter, anything with it, because the waxes on your surface are now edible waxes. So that's the entire waxing or chlorine process. Now, like I showed you the different types of waxes earlier, before I move on, Sorry, Diti Jeff is asking, what is the recommended dry time between coating? Yes. So the first coat of paint, which I've just done, um, ideally you let it dry under the fan for an hour, and then you can move on to your second coat of paint. Once you've done the second coat, if you've got a good coverage, you're happy with the way it's looking, um, let it dry a couple of hours, and then you can wax. So for a chair, for example, this chair, you can finish painting, waxing, everything. You can finish painting, waxing, everything within, um, I would say, four hours. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I think a lot of people are, are the sound is affected by the, the okay. hair dryer. Can we fan it? Yeah. Okay. We're going to fan it instead of hair dry it. Or maybe um, if you can take it out and use a platform mm -hmm. Great, yes. so I was saying, yes, the waxes. So that's how the process works. If you're doing a simple one color finish, you would take, I would say, four hours for a chair like this. First coat of paint, wait one hour, let it dry. Second coat of paint, wait a couple of hours and then apply your wax. If you're not in a hurry, once you're done with your final coat of paint, wait until the next day. So you can just leave it overnight for the paint to set and then wax the next day. If you don't have the time, you know, there are pieces that I've painted, I've left unwaxed for weeks and then gone back and waxed them, that's fine too, no problem. Deep, did you have any advice on people who want to paint lampshades? Yes. Um, <laughs> in fact, just the other day we had someone come in and ask uh, about lampshades. So are we talking about the shade or the base of what? The shade. The shade. Okay, so the shade is, um, I mean, we know it's made of fabric, um, different types of fabric. Chalk paint goes on best on natural fabrics. So cotton, linen, those kind. Of course, it does go on to synthetic as well. What you would do is if you're painting a lampshade, um, you need to apply the paint in thin coats and sort of stipple it. So if you would use this brush because you can stipple into the fabric. So right. the idea is not to cake on a thick layer of paint. It will crack on fabric. You need to take your paint out, thin it down a little bit, kind of like a dye, not too thin, but thin and then work it into the fabric. So the first coat is thin, let it dry. 
second coat, you might need to do three or four coats until you're happy with the coverage because we're doing very thin coats. Um, and then at the end, you don't need to wax fabric. So if you don't want to, you can just leave it as it is. If you want to give it a softer look, you can sand it lightly and then just let it be. If you want a leather-like finish, you can wax fabric. Um, so if you put the wax onto fabric, you get a leathery finish. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. I haven't done that project yet, so maybe that's my next project. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Okay, um, so I was talking to you about the wax, and what I wanted to tell you was that when you use the clear wax, you just go ahead, once the paint is dried, apply the wax with the wax brush, which I will show you soon, um, and that's it. But if you were to use the colored waxes, say the dark wax for a distressed look, or the black wax, you need to also use the clear wax. The reason is that if you apply these colored waxes directly on the paint, it takes in too much of the dark pigment and you can't control how dark or light it finishes. So ideally what you would do is a clear wax coat and then apply the colored waxes over it because then what you can do is actually erase off excess dark or black wax with the clear wax. It acts like an eraser or a barrier. Um, so if you're ever considering using the colored waxes, please remember that you must also use the clear wax uh, for the best finish and to have control on your piece. Okay, so clear wax first. Clear wax first, yes. I just wanted to mention Diane Sadler who said the video is gone for, for her. Maybe Diane you can... Uh, close your app and then open up Facebook again and come back again because sometimes that happens when you when the uh, the app has frozen try to refresh the page yes okay, okay. sorry continue okay so uh, while we wait for the stool to dry and come back let me show you our metallic waxes since we're talking about waxes so these if you can see that yep these are waxes that come in little tubes like this. Oh. Yeah, and they can be used for metallic finishes. So they're super useful if you want to add a little metallic touch to your piece or update hardware. So if you have really old hardware on your, say, chest of drawers and the knobs don't come out because that often happens with really old cabinets, you can actually just do a base coat of paint and then apply any of the metallic colors onto it and immediately update the way it looks. So the colors we have are bright gold here. We have uh, warm gold. We have bright silver, copper, and dark silver. So there are five shades that you can work with. Uh, maybe while we wait for the stool to come back, let me show you how to use these waxes. So here I have a little board that's painted in our Athenian black and then we've applied the clear wax over it, so it's all ready to accept the gilding waxes. We call them gilding waxes. So what color would you like to see? Which shade first? Bright gold, copper, silver? Oh, I like bright gold. I'm always bright up for gold. gold. Okay, let's go for it. So one guy, Kim is asking, is yes. there another alternative if you don't use wax? I, I, I think you have to use wax, right? You should use a uh, finishing um, on top. We have two options. I didn't talk about the lacquer, but the other option rather than the wax is the lacquer, um, the Anislone lacquer, and it comes in a semi-gloss finish and a matte finish. The lacquer is kind of like a varnish. Now, the reason you would use the lacquer is if you're painting outdoor furniture because it has UV protection, so it doesn't allow the paint to fade, and it's also water resistant. So if you're ever painting a piece that's going to sit outdoors um, or for example something in your bathroom or kitchen that has high humidity and wear and tear or even floors then you could use the lacquer. Okay. Okay. So I was going to show you the bright gold on here. Is this a good angle? Yep. Okay. So I'm just putting it on my finger. You could use a finger or even a little brush like this to apply it. Finger gives you a little more control. So I'm going to start quite light and I'm just brushing it over the carvings. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. 
So one lady, Carrie, yes. is asking, I have a very dark piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Would the chalk paint still be okay on that? Yeah, we've painted all kinds, um, very dark teak wood. We've painted pieces that are painted in black and we've done transformed them into white. Um, so yes, the chalk paint will work on any kind of um, dark or light surface. Of course, if you're trying to convert a very dark piece, say a dark teak piece into white, it takes a little more effort because you need to do a few more coats of paint, but it's definitely done and possible, yes. Yeah, I think for me, I painted a, uh, a black side table, Yes, I remember? Know. Yes. And I painted it actually light gray, so it can be done. It can be done, yes. yes, it can. In fact, our most common request for our furniture upcycling service is dark pieces people want to change to white. So it's a little more effort, but it's possible and we do do it and you can do it as well. It's so here you go. Go, oh, beautiful. That's the bright gold and I've applied it quite subtly. If you want a more solid gold finish, you would just go over it a second time. And you used your fingers? I used my fingers, yes. Perfect. Yeah. And the tube goes a very long way. I hardly used a little um, dab of it. Which color should we, should we go with the silver next? Yes, let's try that. Okay. So I'm going to show you the bright silver next. So again, just taking a little bit of my finger. Someone is asking, can yes. we use varnish on chalk paint? But that's the same as your lacquer, isn't it? Yes, so usually chalk paint products go the best together. So if you're using chalk paint, use the chalk paint lacquer. If you're using chalk paint, use the chalk paint wax. If you choose to use a regular varnish from outside, we've had, we don't recommend it because we've had cases of yellowing, peeling, um, and generally the, the products are not meant to go together, so they might not get the finish that you want. For a 100% guaranteed good finish, it's always best to use the Annie Sloan products in combination with each other. Okay, so that's the bright silver. Oh, that looks so pretty. Yeah. So nice. And let me show you, I wanted to show you the copper so you can see how that looks. So I'm going to do a little copper border here. So obviously this <clears throat> metal waxes are more for details of the piece, right? Usually, yes. For highlights, for hardware, for details, or for example, you can stencil with the waxes as well. So if you want a metallic stencil over your paint, you can do that. Uh, we have had cases where people have done, for example, a whole wine rack in a gold finish oh, wow. um, or a copper finish, which you can also do. But yes, usually it's used for these kind of highlights. Works really well on hardware, like I said, and carved pieces like this. Beautiful. Yeah. Camilla is asking, can yes. you get a distressed look with lacquer as well? Lacquer finish? Yes, you can, because when you distress, it's the step before the sealing. So you would paint, distress, and then seal it with either the wax or the lacquer. Of course, you can't use the colored waxes. So if you were planning to give it that dirty aged look, then it's always best to just use the wax because the wax and the lacquer cannot be combined together. Oh, right. Yes, okay. it's one or the other. Yeah. Okay, great. So that was the gilding waxes that we used here. Another question for you. Yeah. Can we use chalk paint on metallic surfaces? Yes, you can. Um, later, I could show you, uh, I could show you, we painted a lamp in the store, I'll show, show you later, which is, um, it's a metal chandelier basically. Um, and we've painted it in chalk paint, we've used the metallic finish on it as well. Um, so yes, it goes on to metal very easily and well. We've done sewing machine bases as well, which is possible. Okay. Yeah. Great, so this is back of uh, the stool and we've, the first coat has it's dried, dried. <laughs> with the help of a hair dryer. Now, we took the hair dryer out, guys, so that you didn't have to uh, listen to the hair dryer. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now, if we just go back, we had painted the first coat, I had added a little bit of water in the paint, mixed it really well, gone ahead and painted. Second coat. So once your first coat is dry, for the second coat, you want to use slightly thinner paint than the first coat. Um, so that it goes on smoothly. So I'm taking my water and adding a little bit here. And you'll notice that when I'm done, the consistency is thinner than the first time. Okay, question. Kim is asking about the waxing part. Okay. How long do they last, the wax? Like, do you have to touch up after a certain time, like a year or so, or it lasts forever? It depends on the usage of the piece. So, for example, if it's uh, like I have a shelf, that a, a cabinet, like a single wardrobe that was painted seven, six years ago, and um, I've never touched it, honestly, after the waxing was done, and it's still in great shape. Uh, but if it's a tabletop and you've waxed it, like we have a cashier's desk here that the top is used a lot and it's in white, um, of course it's going to have some wear and tear. So you can always touch it up with a little bit of paint if you need or you can re-wax it. The wax cleans up stains and um, you know you get a fresher look if you re-wax it in a, in a few years. It's not necessary but yeah if you feel it's getting dirty or got scratches or damage then you can. Oh, that's a good tip actually. Yeah. I've I've painted a piano which I haven't uh, you know, retouched yet and it's been I think about a year and a half now, so the pink one. Yeah, it's a yes. good idea to yeah. actually retouch it once Especially in a while. The top if you're using it and it's you know, sometimes gets scratches if it's a light colour, uh, you could always touch it up. So here you go. This is my second coat of paint and it's much more um, it's much thinner than the first. So Nicola was asking, do you yes. still see the brush strokes after it has dried? Let's have a look. Do we you see do. any brush strokes? You do. you do, yes. Yes, you do. You do, but it's, I mean, the paint, we call it a self-leveling paint. What that means is that a Ooh. lot of the inconsistencies that you see when the paint is wet, they kind of go away once it dries and especially once you wax it. Uh, but like I said, the whole point of chalk paint is that it looks hand painted. It's a work of love and um, yeah, so you will see the brush strokes. If you use the flat brush, you will see less brush strokes. If you do not want brush strokes, you can always sand after your final coat of paint, lightly sand it so you take off the brush strokes or use, even use a roller. But it's never going to look like a professional finished furniture that you could buy like... You, could, you, you can even spray chalk paint. Oh, okay. So you could um, get a spraying gun and Ooh, there's, a, there's a tutorial gun. online that Amazon's done on how to spray chalk paint, which will give you a very, very flat, smooth finish if that's what you want. That's another workshop, guys. Sign up for the uh, <laughs> spraying gun workshop. So that's my second coat, all done. There you go. Okay. So, next step. I've done my two coats of paint, I need to wax. Now obviously I cannot wax the top of this because it is wet. But I'm going to show you the stools of the, the, the legs of the stools and how to wax them. So let's start with, is the sandal okay? Can you see? Yeah. This leg? So this leg here, we have two legs that are already waxed, which are these two, this one and this one. And these two we will wax now, so I'll show you how to do that. First step in your waxing process is take a little bit of wax out in, your, in a paper plate or even the, the cover of your wax tin. So I've got some wax out. You have your wax brush here. Like I said, it's like a shaving brush, slightly peaked on the top, very firm bristles. Now, whenever you're waxing, you sort of work the wax into your brush. You don't want it to have big blobs on top. So it's, you don't really see any big blobs, it's worked in. You don't need too much wax. Remember when you're waxing something, you need just enough wax, because if you put too much, you need to spend another whatever time rubbing off the excess wax right um so just enough is good so that's my wax brush let me show you how to wax this so while you're wa waxing i got a question for you mm. uh luli is asking how 
do we calculate how much paint we need to use for a furniture? That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. So we are always here to help guide you, but a standard rule of thumb is that our little tin here, this is a 120 ml, this is good for one chair. So you can paint this kind of a Kopitiam chair um, with this little tin of paint. If you're doing a whole single wardrobe, you can get the large tin, which is the one liter. Yes. So that's sort of the guide in terms of exact measurements. A large one liter tin will give you 13 square meters of area, surface area. But of course, if you have more specific questions, you can always send us the photograph of the piece you want to paint, and we can guide you on how much paint you need. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea to actually come and show you what yes, it is that you you're. Yes, or you can bring it into the store. And Mida and Leah, who work with us now, will be able to help you. So what I'm doing here is that I am massaging the wax into the paint. You might not be able to tell, but I'm applying quite a bit of pressure. So I would say medium pressure, all directions. Try to get it in, in all the brush strokes and the grooves. Don't leave out any bit. Can you, can you use other materials, maybe like a cloth or something? Does that give a, a different uh, you could effect? If you want. In fact, when I started off seven years ago, I didn't buy the brush first time. <laughs> I used uh, cotton rags like this. Um, but what I found over, year, over the years of painting furniture is that the cotton rags, first of all, they absorb a lot of the wax and you end up wasting a lot of your wax. You need to take much more in the cloth. That's number one. Number two, it takes a lot more effort and takes much longer than using the brush. So if you're doing a big piece, always this will give you what, say this, this will take maybe 20 minutes to do a chair with a brush and it'll take you an hour with the cloth. Oh, right, okay. So it okay. saves you a lot of time and effort. Um, and of course, I would always say the best finish is with the brush. If you're painting a carved piece, you cannot get into the carvings with the cloth. You need to, to have your brush. <clears throat> So, what I've done now is I've applied the wax. Once you apply the wax, it will feel very sticky to the touch. Don't worry about it. Take a white cotton cloth like this one and wipe off all the excess until it feels smooth to the touch. Oh, Denise is asking, how do you clean wax off your brush? All your brushes, paint and wax, you would soak in um, hot water for okay. half an hour mixed with dishwashing liquid and then shampoo really well and rinse off. Okay. Yeah. Don't leave your wax brush unwashed for over one day, otherwise it will be hard to get the wax off. It starts to harden. Oh, right. Yeah. No wonder that happened to my brush. <laughs> Susan, you should have come for a workshop. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> This is why it's great we're doing this now. Yeah. So there you go, I've finished waxing this leg. It feels smooth to the touch now. The wax stays soft for a week to 10 days until it cures, like I explained earlier. So we always suggest that when you have freshly waxed a piece, be gentle with it for the first week to 10 days because it can tend to catch scratches or get a chip or catch dirt. So if it's a tabletop, cover it with something. You can still use it, but just cover it um, for the first week or 10 days. Um, and then of course, this in the end is a decorative natural paint. So keep it away from alcohol. Um, hot things need, require coasters. Basically, however you would look after an expensive piece of furniture, do that with your any slow piece as well. Yeah. Any questions on, so I've showed you how to paint two coats, how to wax. Any questions on this? So far, we're good. We're good? Okay. Mm. Let's move on to the one of the most popular ones, which is distressing. This is my favorite bit. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you two types of distressing today. So here we have a board that's painted in dark egg blue. I think we painted this yesterday. And here we have a board that has an undercoat of uh, Tilton, which is a mustard yellow, 
and the Provence on top of it. So we've done two coats. And we're going to distress both and see how they turn out. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm just going to come a little bit closer here. So what tools do you need to distress? Your first step is to paint your piece. So finish painting it either in a single color like that or in a two color effect if you want to, like this one here. The second thing you need to distress is sanding pads. Um, so these are the Anislo sanding pads. They come in three grits. You have the blue one, which is the coarse. You have the green one, which is the medium. And the red one, which is the fine. For distressing, we always use the blue and the green. We don't use the red because it's too fine. Right. Yeah. Sorry, Deep Tea. Yes. Uh, Angela is just would like to request to you repeat the the process so paint mm -hmm. two paints yeah wax the general painting waxing process yes okay so step one paint your clean your piece with a wet cloth let it dry apply your first coat of paint um let it dry for an hour then apply your second coat of paint between your second coat and your waxing give it two to three hours or overnight rest and then you wax your piece, wipe off the excess wax, and you're done. So it's literally paint and wax and wipe when you're done. Um, so it's pretty easy. Jeff is asking, can I apply uh, gilding wax to a metal feature without painting first? Ideally, you should not because um, actually, you know, you know, chalk paint is porous. So what it does is it gives a great base layer for any wax to suck into. Um, and so to have a longer lasting finish with the gilding waxes, just do any quick base layer of the chalk paint. Because if your metal surface is too smooth, the gilding wax will not stay. So you can just say your metallic surface is um, a, a, you know, brown or whatever. You can just do a, a tone of brown or any color that you want and then apply the gilding wax over it. So always paint before using a wax uh, or a metallic wax. That's a good tip. Okay, so I was saying we use um, the blue and the green for distressing. Let me start with showing you how to distress the single color one. So now when you're distressing, one tip, never fold it and use like one point like this because you will get a very unnatural distress. You want to give equal even pressure on the areas and you want to distress areas that are naturally distressed. So if you go and distress something that's, for example, on this chair, you can see this. Yeah. If I were to distress, say, something here or here right in the middle, it's really not a natural area that would get distressed over time. So you would tend to do maybe the, you know, where you put your bum or the edges or the bottoms of the legs, areas that are naturally going to have wear and tear. So for this one, I'm going to distress the carvings and the edges and we see how it looks. The wood below is actually quite light. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the wood coming through now. Yeah. So there is actually no rule on how, like, you know, um, on ways to kind of to use the sandpaper. You can just kind of, yeah, you, you know, to, swirl it around or yeah, uh, usually up and down. one direction up and down. You wouldn't do circular motions generally because it, it get more scratches on the paint. Right. Uh, if you're doing corners, you can do circular motions for corners. Okay. But generally, you would tend to do this kind of up and down movement. get the edges. Now the other thing with sanding is that your paint will end up looking a bit dusty and the color might change which is fine because of the sand, because of the dust that the paint is creating. The moment you wax it, you will the color will go back to the original. So don't worry about that. Okay. So now you see that's just Ah, yeah. yeah. Let me do the edges. Okay. 
shame. This might take a while if you're like doing a wedding cabinet or a, you know. Yes, this just is a little bit of hard work and time yeah. um, It requires patience and yes. lots of arm power. Correct. As does waxing. But I do find painting furniture is quite therapeutic. Yeah, me too. It's so relaxing and so uh, fulfilling at the end, especially because you know you can see results quickly. A lot of people who come to us for workshops say that they find it, or even our customers, and they come back so many times because they find it relaxing and therapeutic. Okay, so I've done the edges as well. You'll Perfect. be able to see this really clearly at the moment I wax it. So let me show you. Got my wax in the brush and the... have people sent you pictures of all their circuit breaker furniture projects? <laughs> Quite a few, yeah. Circuit breaker was a big DIY time. <laughs> Lots of people chalk painting. It was so heartening actually, we were not expecting it. Okay, so there you go. Perfect. waxed and I want to quickly show you the dark wax on this so if I were to use the dark wax which is here. so that's the dark wax very dark yeah yeah so I'm going to use a cloth now usually when you're using the dark or the black wax you need to have a separate brush or use a little cloth like this don't combine your brush that you use for the clear wax uh, one question is, yeah. would chalk paint be okay on outside plant, plant pots and do they last? Yes, yes they do. Um, you don't even need to seal them actually. You can paint them, let them bake in the sun and that sort of sets the paint. If you're really particular, you can um, lacquer them, which will give you weather resistance. Uh, but yes, I have lots of customers who have leftover paint and they paint all their plant pots and they last very, very long. In fact, Annie Sloan's painted um, the outside of her house with chalk paint and uh, just let it let it bake in the sun in you know, one of the hot summer days. And it's been there for years and years and years and no problem. Okay, another question is, do you think it, should, it would look okay if I painted my dark chest white and then wanted to distress it? I think it would look cool, yeah, right? Yeah, actually that looks, a dark piece of furniture looks very nice distressed because you get the contrast with the white. Um, here, for example, the wood below is very light, mm. so you don't really get that contrast um, and it's harder to, to notice. So, what, another question, when do you distress? Do you wax first or distress first? So, like I showed you here, what I had done was I had painted this board yesterday, then I distressed and the final step is the wax. Okay. So, paint, distress and wax. If you paint, wax and then distress, you have to wax again. Right. So you'd rather just avoid that. Also, if you're distressing indoors and you want to avoid the dust, you can dampen the sanding pads oh. and then distress. You need to have practice because with a damp sanding pad, you can just you know get off a big chunk of paint. So yeah, practice and then you can do that as well. It's quicker as well than dry sanding. Um, and these are washable, so you can wash and reuse. Okay, so I, I have the dark wax now in my hand. The moment I apply it, don't worry. <laughs> A lot of people, this is like the uh, the moment of truth for, for people <laughs> because once they apply the, the dark wax, they go, ah, yeah. what happened? But you know, we have the clear wax at the bottom so I can always control how my dark wax look which which I show you in a bit. So now I've got the dark wax on. So you kind of have to dab it first, little yeah. by little, little right? By little dab it on as try not to put a whole bunch of it on because you want to go slowly and see how it's looking. So now I've got the dark wax on. What I'm going to do is blend it and give it a more subtle look with more clear wax. So now I'm going to take some clear wax. So that's just to lighten it up a little bit. Correct, just to give it a more natural finish. So you see that? 
Yeah. If people are not that this patient, you can always call Deep Tea <laughs> and, <laughs> and tell her to do it for you. She does lots of amazing projects and has so many really cool makeovers from Yeah, we do we do it for people who don't want to do it themselves or want a more advanced look that they don't think they can do. Um, of course all of the pieces are hand painted by us here, so there's three of us and uh, so we have limited capacity, but yes, you can always reach out to us. So another lady is asking, what do you do if you apply the dark wax and then realize you made a mistake. Oh, that, I've done that also many it times. It can always be fixed. So I finished this now. So you can see that it's got an aged kind of dirty antique look. Yep. If I don't like the way this is looking and I want to go back to something like that, I would, if you want to do it immediately and you're in a hurry, you can lightly sand off the wax. All right. So just a scuffing to reduce the oiliness and then paint over. So just lightly sand it off yeah. and then paint over. If you're doing it immediately. If you're okay to wait a week to 10 days, then you don't even need to sand. You can just paint over. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you're impatient like me, yes. sand it off. Yes. Great. Correct. So that's how the dark wax looks. Um, and that's how you use it and a distressed finish. Let me show you the next one, which is the two colors. So here we've done a yellow at the bottom and the Provence on top and we're going to distress it. So the same technique. There's another question here from Fanan. I have this Arabic metal tray table which mm -hmm. have rust and I want to spray paint it and now I want to try chalk paint. Yes. So that will still be okay, right? Yeah, so the thing with rust is the, the paint is not magic. No paint is magic. Rust will grow out of your paint, any kind of paint. So you need to first get the rust off. You can do that by soaking your piece in vinegar for a few hours. So just if it's, you can't soak it in vinegar, dab on the vinegar and leave it overnight. Oh. And then the next day wipe off with a, with a damp cloth and most of the rust will come off. If there are some bits of rust still left, you can sand it with a sanding pad and then you can paint. Oh, that's a really good tip. I didn't know that. Yeah, vinegar takes off rust. We also, if you don't, you are not able to get all the rust off, we have an anti-rust, anti-mold primer that we sell here that's also water-based. You can use that as a base coat, so in the future it won't allow the rust mold or whatever else to grow and then paint over that. Okay. That's a really good tip because everything in Singapore molds yes, and rusts because of the humidity. Yeah. Any type of vinegar, Denise was asking, yeah, white, white vinegar, vinegar is okay? Yes, the, the, the white vinegar is okay, then yes. Okay, so. Oh, this is looking much different. Yeah, and it's also looking dusty, and you can see people say, oh my God, the color has changed, you know, yeah. because if you compare it, don't worry, that's just the fine dust. The moment I wax it, again, let me show you. The color goes back. So when you're waxing a flat surface, you would go circular motions like that. And if you have a carved area, sort of go in all directions, jab into it, just get the wax into all the little bits. And then finally, we wipe. Do you have to put some power in the wipe? You know, like no. arm power or just no. kind of gently just, wipe it off? Yeah, just take off the excess. I mean, waxing is not a delicate activity, so you need to go at it, you know, put the effort in. 
But with the brush, it's, it's very quick and easy. No, what I meant is I'm quite concerned if you would t take away the wax away with the oh, cloth. Oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. Because the moment you apply the wax, the paint sucks it in. Ah, And then okay. you need to just get off all the extra so that it's able to cure. Okay, and there got you it. Go. Oh, that looks so, so pretty. You can, yeah, you can see the yellow coming through. So this is a very popular technique that we teach in our Annie Stone uh, workshop. And people love doing it because it adds a pop of color. But you can still keep the overall tone, you know, neutral if you want. For example, if I've done a yellow at the bottom and a light gray on top, you can still get those pops of yellow. But it's not a yellow piece of furniture, you know, if you don't want to go that bold. Great, so that is distressing. Any questions on distressing? Uh, there's a question about waxing. Yes. On the, on gilding, do you wax on top of the gil gilding? No, the gilding wax is the final step. It's a wax in itself. So you don't need to do anything. You would just, so I'll apply the gilding wax here and I'm just going to leave it to set. Right, yeah. so no need to like. No need to do anything. Okay, perfect. So I have a question yes. for for uh, this one here. The distressed one. So that is kind of like the same effect if you had a dark furniture and you wanted to paint it lighter, right? And then distress it, that would the dark would come out. Yes, the dark would come out like the yellow. Right. Yeah. Rebel is asking, can you use industrial vinegar available at most supermarkets? Yes, like yes. right? You said yeah. any yeah. vinegar any is, vinegar is good. Apple cider vinegar is maybe a little bit more expensive. <laughs> yeah, just um, like normal white vinegar you get at supermarkets is good. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh yeah, I can show the metal. Somebody was asking about gilding waxes on metal. So these are actually um, very rough metal keys. So they already have grooves in them and little bits where the wax tends to catch. So here we've just put the wax directly on the metal. Uh, so if you have a very rough metal, you could possibly do this. But it does, so you see this one had the gold on it and it's almost all rubbed off because we didn't do a base coat of the paint. Right. If you do do the base coat of the paint, then it won't come off like ah. this. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. So we're going to move on to the last bit. which is color mixing. So like I said, all Annie Sloan colors can be mixed and I'm going to show you how to do that today. Let's start with a very simple one, which is, I have old violet here, which is a, a violet. And I'm going to use white and see what shades we can get. Okay, there's another question come. Yeah. Just got in. Sure. Uh, with the outdoor furniture that's painted. Yes. After rain or sun. Yeah. Can you sit on it, for example, without getting color on you? Yeah. Yeah. If uh, number one, if you have applied the lacquer and sealed it, then it really doesn't matter. You can just wipe it off and sit on it. If you have not applied a sealant, so you've not applied the lacquer then it must have had 10 days of rain-free time for the paint to set. Um, and completely and dry. And then even if it gets wet, you can sit on it, nothing happens. It's, it's fully set. Okay. So make sure it sets and dry. Yes. Before so you put it outside. So also that, yeah, you could keep it inside for a few days. Let it fully, let the paint set and then move it outside. If you don't want to use the lacquer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so old violet here. It doesn't look very nice right now. Actually, this is a very common question we get when people open their paint cans. They're like, hey, this color looks wrong. Have you given me the wrong color? No, we haven't. Because it's a water-based paint, what happens is the pigments, the, the water separates. So what you see on top is the different types of pigments and a little bit of the water. The moment you mix it, so whenever you open your can, Give it do a good you, mix. You, you do you shake the can first? You could, before? you could also shake it, yeah. You, you could, could give shake it a good it. shake. Now you see the color coming through. Sorry, another question for the outdoor. Yes. Do you mean outdoor, is it lack or not, not wax? Yes, no wax for outdoor. Because of our humidity, the wax will 
I mean, you, it, it, we recommend the lacquer. If you're doing outdoor furniture, use the lacquer to seal the paint. It's water resistant, it's UV proof, so it doesn't fade, um, gives you good protection. Okay. Yeah. So definitely lack for outdoor. Yeah. Lacquer for outdoor. Okay, so I've mixed the soul violet up. You can see the color has come through. What I'm going to do now is just take a dab of it on my mixing mat. And I'm going to take a little bit of the white. So I have here the pure white, which is a bright, crisp white. We usually use it for mixing. Or if you're going for a very contemporary, modern, clean finish, you would use the white, the, the pure white on your furniture. Um, okay, let's see how this goes. So I have a question while you're concentrating mixing. Yes. Uh, does the chalk paint work on wicker? Yes. Does. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't even know that. It does. So there you see, we've got a slightly lighter shade. Can you see that on the camera? Yeah. See the difference in the shade? Yeah, now it's lighter, isn't it? It's much lighter. I'll do another tone, which is going to be even lighter. So that just had like one dab on it. Lighter. Yeah, just a dab. So that one's even lighter. That's a nice shade. This is why it's important to put it on the bowl first, isn't it? So then you can like decide what color, for example, if you're mixing. If you are mixing, use yeah. a, uh, I would say, say a teaspoon or a tablespoon, like a measure. And then slowly, first you would just test it out like this. Yeah. So here, for example, in this shade, the, the first one that I mixed, I would say it is two parts of the violet to one part of the white. And this shade here is two parts of the white to one part of the violet. Right. So once you've figured that out kind of, it doesn't need to be exact, then you can do the mixing in a bowl. So say you're going for this shade, the lighter shade here, you would take two tablespoons of the white, one tablespoon of the violet and give it a good mix and you will get a shade somewhat like this. If you still feel it's dark, you could always lighten it. Um, so go for a darker shade first because you can always go back and lighten it with the white. Yeah. A, a good, uh, an interesting question from Nicola is, yes. will it dry t true to that color or does it dry slightly darker? It usually will dry true to the color. But the moment you apply the clear wax, the colors deepen slightly. So you could keep that in mind, especially some colors like the English yellow, for example, the moment you apply the clear wax, it goes slightly deeper than the bright yellow that you see when you paint it. Okay, so that was the, the violet and we've sort of mixed it into a couple of shades. I wanted to show you my favorite, which is the coral. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, so That's these beautiful. colors are um, the Tilton, uh, which is the mustard yellow, and the Empress Silk, uh, which is the bright red and the white. And we're going to use all of these to mix in the coral. So I'm going to take the yellow first. Then I'm going to take some red. Can you do this for people when they come to your shop and say, actually, I'm not really sure if I have decided the color. Can you sort of give me we, we ideas? Can help you. Yeah, of course. We help you choose colors. We suggest combinations. We can even mix and show you samples. Um, but we don't mix the whole paint for no. you. You can buy the paint and then you, know, you can go ahead and mix it. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to get some white. So whenever you want to brighten a color, use the pure white. For example, somebody told us recently that, you know, I want, I love the English yellow, but I want it a tinge brighter. So what you can do is just add in a little bit of the pure white and it'll immediately lighten and brighten the color. Or you can also seal it with the white wax instead of the clear wax because that also lightens and brightens the color. Yeah. So let me show you this now. I just want to get back to Denise. Yes, Denise, you can use the paint on uh, wicker. Yes. So here you see I've mixed a coral. So I don't 
a smidge of the white and the red into the tilting. And if you want to light it further, you can always add a little more white. If you'd like, I can show you dabs of these colors on the So this is MDF that we're using here. So that's the coral. Oh, wow. And that's the light shade we mix from the violet. So yeah, very easy to mix. Um, you just need to go for it and try and play around and you can get so many thousands of shades with just the basic 44 colors that we have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good. Any any questions on the color mixing bit? Uh, not not on the color mixing so okay. far. Anything else? Yeah. No, no, not no okay. questions at the moment. Thank you. Uh, this is a Vicor or uh, like a Rattan uh, doll house, and we're planning to do workshops where you can come in and paint this in custom colors and then take it home as a present for a little one or. Oh, um, perfect. So yeah, you can definitely use the paint on rattle. Perfect. Or wicker, or even cane, bamboo, any of these materials. Great, so I wanted to um, end with uh, showing you what we teach in our more detailed basic Annie Sloan basic techniques workshop, which we host here at the studio. We teach three techniques. Um, one is the two color distress, which we demonstrated today as well. Uh, so here you have a bottom color, top color, then we distress it and seal it with different waxes. Then we teach a wash. So this is a two color wash. How do you, a lot of people want to create a washed look on their furniture, so we teach that technique. And then this one is the cracked effect, where we teach how to use heat to crack the paint. And then use the colored waxes to highlight the cracks. Um, so that's the, the three techniques that we do in our basic techniques. And Deepji, where can people sign up if they want to do this workshop? Everything is on our website. Um, you can just go online and sign up. If you don't find a date that suits you, you can always get in touch with us and we can see what uh, date we can work out. Um, and of course, you can come by the studio if you have questions and we're always here to help with your projects. Oh, one last question. If yes. you painted outdoor furniture uh, with lac, would it... Would it rot in the rain no. no i mean if your wood is already rotting yes yeah. it will continue okay. to rot but if it's a good solid piece of furniture and you've painted and waxed it i mean painted and lacquered it um, should be okay it should be fine if you want to be extra safe like i said we have a primer here that is an anti-mold anti-rust anti-humidity kind of um, primer so you could do a base coat of that perfect Okay, thank you so much, Great. DT. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And thank you to Susan from Expat Living and Clooney Court um, for helping us do this. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this live demo. And if you have any questions at any point, um, we are on social media, on our website, or at the store at Clooney Court, uh, always uh, available. Um, also, I wanted to say that um, we have a discount code for everybody who's attended today. If you have registered on the Expat Living website, then we'll email you out that code that's valid for a week from now. So if you want to embark on that chalk paint project, then it would be a good time. Perfect. There's a few other questions, but okay. I, I will get the questions uh, off to Deep Tea. Carrie, we will answer you. Uh, we will email you guys all the information okay. and all the answers back um, a little bit later. Okay, sure. We Thank you that. so much, Deep Thank Tea. You. Thanks, See everybody. You, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Perfect. That was good. Do I press finish? Uh, yeah, I think you